day like this. We thank you for the life that we have, the life in Christ Jesus. We thank you for a special day like this, a day in which we are remembering the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who came for our purpose, lived for our salvation, died for our redemption, and rose to give us hope of eternal life. Lord, you gave us the best that you have the Son, that we might live with you eternally in glory, and that while we are here yet on earth, that we might enjoy the best of God in our life, that the glory of the Lord might be seen in us, that this world and generation may know that we belong unto you. You have left us here, Lord, that we will be an example of godliness and righteousness, example of holiness and of purity in all that we do that we may be a light to the world in darkness, that we may be a hope to the world of hopelessness. Dear Father, we hand over ourselves unto you and pray that the grace to follow after the step of our master who gave up everything, who gave up the praise in heaven, the worship of angels, the dignity and everything, and came in the manger to die for sinful men like us. Help us, Father, that we live our lives to the service of humanity in Jesus' name. Bless us as we share together today. In Jesus' name we pray. I welcome us to the worship service today in Jesus' name. As you all know that uh, today, worldwide, is recognized as the day of resurrection, Easter Sunday. And uh, we don't celebrate like the world. Because if there is anything to celebrate, it should be our newness of life in Christ Jesus. If there is anything to celebrate, it is the fact that we have died together with him, buried with him, and now we resurrect together with him. If there is anything we need to celebrate at all, it is a celebration of the fact that we are free from the addictions of the world the allurements of the world, the destructions of the world, and the evil that is in this world. If there is anything we need to celebrate at all, it is the fact that we have our eyes set on heaven and our name written in the book of life. Do you have anything to celebrate? We need to celebrate the fact that we are children of the Most High God. We need to celebrate the fact that when we pray, there is an answer from heaven. We need to celebrate the fact that there is hope for us, despite the challenges of life, the storms that rage, the winds that bloom. Yet, we know that we have hope in Christ, uh, and that anything we desire of him, he do it for us. We celebrate all this, because we are the heirs of his kingdom. I say we are the heirs of his kingdom. Uh, the apostle said, if only here on earth we have hope, we are of all men the most miserable. The people of this age, they rejoice in the mundane things of earth and of life that they get. And that is why we sang the song in the morning, you take, take the world with all its gilded toys. Take, take the world, I covet not its joy. Mine is what? A way that no moth or rod destroy. And then what's the last thing? Who is yours forever? Jesus is mine forever. He will be us for us in Jesus' name. That's why as we are getting to the final stage, of course, after this message, the general superintendent is still going to come up. Uh, the final stage of this uh, retreat for this year, we need to understand that one thing is the fact that Jesus gave his life for us, and we must give our life for him. I said we must give our life for him. And that's why we are talking about prosperity through sacrificial giving. Prosperity. If you want to prosper in life, if you want to advance in life, if you want to progress in life, if you want promotion in life, if you want to succeed in life, learn to make 
sacrifices. Learn to give. Learn to go out of your way and be a blessing to humanity. Learn to invest into the life of others. Learn to live not just for yourself or your family alone. Learn to live for the sake of other people because it is at that point that the blessings of the Lord will come upon your life. We're looking at First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 26, 22 to 26. First Chronicles chapter 21, verses 22 to 26. Then David said to all man, Grant me the place of this threshing floor, that I may build an altar therein unto the Lord. Thou shalt grant it me for the full price. Mark that word. Was it the full price? God will help us to go all the way in Jesus' name. That the plague may be stayed from the people. And Oman said unto David, take it for thee. And let my Lord the King do that which is good in his eyes. Lo, I give thee the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing instrument for wood, and the wheat for the meat offering. I give it all. And the king said, and the king David said to Onam, Nay, but I will verily buy it for the full price, for I will not take that which is thine for the Lord nor offer burnt offering without cause. So David gave to Onam for the place 600 shekels of gold by weight. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offering and called upon the name, uh, upon the Lord. And what's the next statement? I can hear you. He answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Praise the Lord. Some people don't understand the secret of blessing, the secret of healing, the secret of progress, the secret of adv advancement in life. They don't understand. There are people that just want to give anything uh, anyhow unto the Lord. And yet God will not take anything anyhow. You know, there is a statement that says that the only thing that man has learned from history is the fact that man never learned from history. Look at it from Genesis. There was a man called Cain and then he had a brother called Abel. And these two people, they gave, they gave. Not that one gave and the other did not give. But they gave differently. One gave wholeheartedly. One gave sacrificially. One gave sincerely. One gave without any grumbling or complaining. The other one just gave haphazardly. The other one gave just, uh, okay, out of convenience, out of comfort. Uh, and they got looked at the two people. Yes, A gave and B gave. And God had honor and respect to the uh, sacrifice of Abel, and then Cain was rejected. I pray your life will not be rejected. Your services will not be rejected. Uh, your devotions will not be rejected in Jesus' name. And so, here is a case. There are people, they have things going on in their life, going on in their family, going on in their environment, going on in their church, and they don't understand the secret of the deliverance and of the healing to what is going on there. And some of them, all they do is just, well, my father is the cause, my mother is the cause, my husband is the cause, my wife is the cause. It is my generational whatsoever is the cause. Whoever is the cause or whoever is not the cause, you are now the man in charge, the woman in charge that can change the course of nature. You are now the one that, that can change the course of life and break that jinx and break that yoke and begin a new turning point in that family. And I, I pray the Lord will use you. To bring about a new beginning in your family. A new beginning in your environment in the name of Jesus. And so something happened in the land. And then judgment came upon the land. And destruction was coming upon the land. 
people were dying and pestilences here and there. And David knew the secret of touching the heart of God. It was a sacrifice, a sacrifice. And so when it was about to be done, an enemy was coming through a, a gift. A gift. Sometimes we don't understand that gift blinds the eyes. And then the man from whom David was to take the land and the oxen and everything, the man said, you are the king. I give it to you for free. Uh-uh. It's not every time you accept a gift. It's not every time you eat or drink. It's not every time. There is time for everything. And David said, no, I know better. I'm a worshiper of God. I'm a server of God. I know that in times like this, there is need for sacrifice, sacrificial giving, giving unto the Lord. Because when God created the world, he gave the world. The world was in darkness. The world was out of what without shape. And God came, he gave life to the world. God came, he gave light to the world. God came, he gave hope to the world. And then let there be light and then there was light. Not just that, every other thing that God created, talk about the animals, talk about the birds and the air, talk about the water, talk about the tree, talk about everything. They were all created for the good of man. He gave everything. He gave. And then at the end of the day, he created man, not just like the animal, not just like the beast, not like, not like the bird. He created man in his own image. And look at your Bible in the book of Genesis. When God created man, the Bible say it was very good. You are a very good man. I say you're a very good woman. In the name of Jesus. And anything that will defame you, reduce you, uh, the Lord will take away from your life in Jesus' name. Understand God gave. And when eventually sin came into the, in, into the garden, and man fell into sin, and man was doomed for destruction uh, all through eternity, God turned around again and then made a provision. He gave again his only begotten son, the best that he had. He gave to humanity for our ransom, for our deliverance, for our liberation from the forces and powers of darkness and from eternal damnation. He gave the best that he had for us, for us. So then if we must give anything, it must be the best that we have. Pay attention. If you must get the best from God, you must give the best that you have. A giving to God is not just a matter of mouth. Giving to God is not just a matter of convenience. Some wants to come to church when it is convenient. They want to pray when it is convenient. They want to give when it is convenient. Even some, even though, look at it, let's even talk about tithe and offering. And when we talk about tithe, I'm not just talking about tithe of your income alone. Of course, I'm talking about that. But the tithe of your life. The tithe of your time, the tithe of your talent, the tithe of your marriage, the tithe of your children, the tithe of everything that God has given unto you. How much of those can you give to God? You know, there are people that when you are serving God, they tell you, you are doing too much, you are running too much. And then one man somewhere there, one child somewhere there wants you to slow down. Don't give all the time to God. Give some time to me. Give some time to us. Yes, there is time for everything on the the Bible says that let them that marry be as what? As though they are not married. If you are going to be your best for God, you have to understand that there is time for everything. If daughter needs time with you, if husband needs time with you, if wife needs time with you, let them join you in serving the Lord. I said, let them join you in serving the Lord. So then you have your time together with the Lord in the service of the Lord. And then you have your treasure. It's not just that uh, it's my house, it's my car. What do you use your house for? What do you use your car for? You know, some people, their vehicle is so special to them. Tell them to carry uh, materials from the church. We need to buy some to build a house of God. Oh, my car is so special. They can't use their car. Who gave you the car? Who gave you your life? Who gave you the life that you have? All that you have, all that you own, they belong to God. 
I said they belong unto God. And there are some people you need their wife for something. No, my wife will not be available. I need your husband. My husband will not be available. And then you, you forgot. You forgot. Let me tell you very quickly. There was a particular man. I don't know whether he was an atheist or not. But he stood his ground that a child must never, never give a life to Christ Jesus. And he did everything. You are my daughter. I am this. I am that. God does not exist to cut a long story short. Eventually, that child, grown up child, mature child, old enough to take decision for herself. But because of the fear of the father, because of the decision of the father, well, he is the one that does all this for me and does all that for me. And because of that, the child refused to give her life to God. And one day, the child took ill. And very, very serious sickness got admitted into the hospital at the end of it all. Shortly before she died, her eyes were opened. She saw her fire. And she screamed and cried, Daddy, help me. This is fire. I'm going into it. She was still here, still talking. Daddy, help me. Help me. Help me. And the father was there, helpless, couldn't help the child. Eventually, the child died. She went straight to her fire. But she spoke about her fire. Within those last minutes, she preached about her fire. Listen to this. That man now knowing about her fire. And the pain and the anguish and the suffering and the difficulty the child went through before she finally gave up the ghost, the man turned around and gave his life to Christ Jesus. But he sent the daughter to hell. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Your wife? Your husband? God forbid. Persecution? Opposition? Joblessness? Infirmity, I say God forbid. You know, Zechariah was a man, he was a priest. Zechariah was uh, barren, no child. And some people will say, well, how do I preach to people that God can save, God can deliver, God can do this and that, when I'm having this issue and challenging my life? Not Zechariah. Zechariah kept serving the Lord. It was in the course of that sacrificial service that his blessing came. He came, your blessing will come. I say your blessing will come in the name of Jesus. If you say you are a child of God, if you say you have an encounter with God, if you say you are born again, if you say you are following the Lord, then no man in your life will be stronger than God. No woman in your life will be, you know, some people, some men, and I pity them because their wife will say, if you don't dance to my tomb, then I take myself away from you and them because every woman, they deny God. At the end of the day, your wife will not stand for you before God. Your husband will not stand for you before God. You will give an answer and account for yourself. First John chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give your time. Give your talent. Give your treasure. Give your money. Give your car. Give your house. Give your child. Give your wife. Give your son. Give your husband. Give everything you have. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give your education. Give your career. Give and it shall be given unto you. And uh, the apostle Peter, he said, Lord, master, we have God forsaken everything and follow you. What shall be our reward? And he said, here in this world, you will get everything. How many percentage? 100%. 100%. And then, in the world to come, eternity, you'll be blessed. Are you there in Luke chapter 6? Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. And shaking together. And running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with dull, with dull, with dull, it shall be measured unto you again. And somebody say, Amen. Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 and 20 to 26. There is that scattereth, and yet increaseth. 
He's giving, and the more he gives, the more he's having. The more he's giving, the more he's having. There is that scattered and yet increased, and there is that we told that more than is meat, but it tender to poverty. The Libra soul shall be made fat. I need an amen there. And he that waterized shall be watered also himself. I need another amen. He that we told that come, the people shall cause him. I need an amen there. But blessing shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. I need another amen. Amen. The Bible is saying, when you give, you give cheerfully. You give willingly. You give happily. You give regularly. You give sincerely. You give devotedly. Blessing will come upon you in Jesus' name. We're looking at five points. How many points? It used to be three, right? But today, how many? You know why it is five today? Today is the day of resurrection. I said today is the day of resurrection. And let me tell you the another reason why it is five. When you are numbering one, two, three, four, five, and then you convert those five numbers to letter, then you have J E S U S. I can hear somebody. I can hear somebody. And then the Bible says that uh, at the name of Jesus, every name shall bow. Amen. And every knee in your life shall bow. Every yoke shall submit to the name of Jesus. To the authority of Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus. Because today, you are going to be the prophet of your life. I say you're going to be the prophet of your life. You will take a decree in that name. And it shall be established unto you. In the name of Jesus. And so, how many points today? Five points. Number one. The call. We're looking at call to prosperity through sacrificial giving. The first question is, how many of you want to prosper in life? Amen. If you are one of them, just say amen. amen. When you're talking about prosperity, you're talking about increase. When you're talking about prosperity, you're talking about health. You're talking about strength. You're talking about progress. You're talking about success in life. You're talking about advancement in life. When you talk about prosperity, you are talking about surplusity, increase and multiplication in your life. And the Bible is saying the secret of it, the way to it, the shortcut to it is the way of giving. And when you give, don't just give. Give how? sacrificially, sacrificially. The book of Psalm 107 is where I'm looking at. Verses 21 and 22. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. When you're praising God, you are giving unto God. Are you listening to me? When you are praising God, you are giving unto him. When you really pay attention here, I'm not so much in a rush today. Listen, when you really want to get blessed, some people all they do their life is just to pray, 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 pray as if God is dead. Go and look at your Bible. The Bible says that God is, uh, the, the, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that he cannot deliver. Neither is here too heavy that he cannot hear. It is your sin, your iniquity, your transgression that has drawn you far away from him when Things are going tough, and you have done your fast, uh, your, your praying. Nothing seems to be happening. You've done your fasting. Nothing seems to be happening. Try praising the Lord. I said, try praising the Lord. The Bible says that God inhabits the praise of his people. When you praise the Lord, he does things for you to rejoice. He gives you happiness in your life. And somebody here today is going to be full of joy. On the day of resurrection, after Jesus resurrected, there was joy in the life of the people. Listen to this. Everything in your life that is dead is coming back to life. And joy will come upon you in Jesus' name. Are you there in the book of Psalm? Oh, that men will praise the Lord. You have a reason to praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works. To the children of men. And let them, what's the next word? Sacrifice. The sacrifices of thanksgiving. And declare his works with rejoicing. Declare Anytime you're talking about God, you are happy talking about God. Amen. Anytime you are coming to church, you are happy coming to church. Anytime they are talking about the things of God, you know some people when they talk about work in the church, the things of the Lord, they become moody. Not me. I become happy. 
As a matter of fact, maybe today I should, I should go the extra mile and then act like David and take you the extra step and give you the sacrifice and keep you in the church here till 6 p.m. Because David said, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. You know, Paul the Apostle, maybe he read it uh, uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, uh, what David said, and Paul the Apostle got to a place and then he was preaching, and then all day long, Paul, Paul continued to preach. You know, here, uh, we, we even give you time for break. Paul didn't give any time for break. Uh, and then Paul prayed, preached, 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 and then he, when he's done preaching, preaching he, got, he turned into teaching. When he's done into, with teaching, he gets into preaching and then by the night time somebody said night time there was a guy there his name is tychicus <laughs> that guy said paul when are you going to stop me i take off and the guy took off he slept off before he knew it he fell off from off the balcony he landed on the floor and then and then the thing said okay tychicus you want to sleep okay death is a better sleep and then he died. And people were shocked. And Paul said, well, Tychicus, if you had been smart enough, you would have gone the extra mile with me. You wouldn't have slept at all. Let me tell you, that Jesus I'm talking about is able to wake you up. You people don't, be, don't, be, don't, don't, don't panic. And Paul got there. And then, in the name of Jesus, in whose name? I said, in whose name? And Tychicus come back to life. Everything dead in your life is coming back to life. In the name of Jesus. Raise up your hands and say in the name of Jesus. By the power of the Lord. From this day going forward. Life is coming back into me. Because going forward. I will sacrifice. I will give my time. My talent. My treasure. To God's glory. My life will not remain the same. In the name of Jesus. Year 2018. Are you tired? I say year 2018. It's my year of turning point. It's my year of progress. It's my year of excellence. In the name of Jesus. It is yours. I said it is yours. In Jesus name. Psalm 66. Psalm 66. We're looking at it from verse 10. For thou, O God, has proved us. Has proved us. I pray when God proves you, 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 you will be qualified. I said be qualified. Oh God, thou has proved us. Thou has tried us as silver is tried. Thou brought us into the net. Thou laid affliction upon our loins. Thou has caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. But thou, but thou, but thou, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. I need an amen there. I will go into thy house with bond offering. Can you see it there? With bond offering, I will pay thee my vow, which my lips have uttered, and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee what? Bound sacrifices of fatling. Amen. Not look at it. David, I told you, that's why he was telling oh man, uh, don't just give it to me. He said, I will offer unto you not just bond sacrifice, but bond sacrifices of fatling. Not listen. I, when you look, read your Bible, read very well. Look at every uh, dot and the crossing of T, the dotting of I. He didn't say, I will offer sacrifice. What did he say he's going to offer? sacrifices sacrifices and then he also said of fatly not just a lean sacrifice not just a mean sacrifice i'm going to give you something of water i'm going to give you something of value and i'm going to give you something that you cannot reject the lord will take you there in jesus name you know some people when you give in the church and then we say we are doing this in the church give and they say but we gave before but you were blessed before I said, but you were blessed before. Do you want to be blessed again? Give again. I said, give again. Give more of your time, more of your money, more of your treasure, more of your talent. The more you give, the more you are increased. Amen. 
and somebody is getting there in Jesus' name. He said, I will, verse 15, I will offer unto thee bond sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of ram. I will offer bullocks with goats. Selah, come and hear. All ye that fear God, where are they here? I said, where are the people that fear the Lord? Ah, you are one of them in Jesus' name. And I will declare what he has done for my soul. You are blessed. You are blessed. Sacrifice exactly is what God demands when he wants to test our true love. When he wants to test our commitment. When he wants to test our service unto him. When he wants to test our devotion, our consecration. When he wants to test us, he asks us to make sacrifice. And some people, they don't understand the secret of progress in life. God has given us life and everything to enjoy. When he demands anything, he watches our behavior. He watches our attitude. He watches our action. He watches our language. What are you saying? It's wanting for you to say something openly. What are you saying behind? God is hearing everything. God is listening to everything. Is anybody calling you to build a house for them? Are they calling you to buy a car for them? Is it not about the name of the Lord, the glory of the Lord, the progress of the work of the Lord? And you are mad. You are converted today. I say you are converted today. Sacrifice in the, in the scripture, especially in the Old Testament, is an act of killing an animal. Or surrendering a possession as an offering to God or to a deity or a supernatural being or figure. And in our own time, we don't sacrifice an animal, but we give sacrificially. And the Lord blesses us as we give in Jesus' name. Understand, understand, if the people of the world are building for the glory of the world, Pay attention here. We, the children of the kingdom, must build to God's glory. And to build to God's glory is not just by mere wish. It's by action. It's by our commitment. It is by our consecration. It is by our concentration on what we are doing. It is by our cooperation together. And the Lord sees what we do. And he blesses what we do. Pay attention here. If you are doing evil, blessing will come upon it. If you are doing good, blessing will come upon it. This is what I'm talking about. Revelation chapter 22 says, He that is just, let him be just still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is unrighteous, let him be unrighteous still. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. To give to everybody as their work shall be. Some will labor and labor and labor for the mundane things of life. And then they will think, I have arrived. And just about the time for them to sit down and begin to enjoy, God, they will be cut off. You will not be cut off. I say you know because of all. And that is why the Bible says that we should not labor for the meat that perish. When you were building your house, did you just put down one money at, at, at one time and you say, that is it? Is that what you do? How often do you put money? Again and again and again until the house is built. The house of God shall be built. The people of God shall be built. The work of God shall be done in Jesus' name. And some of you that were rejoicing that you bought a brand new car. How did you buy it? You bought it on credit. Let's talk to ourselves. Right? And then the finance company, when you pay them once, do you say, well, I got the car already, I have the key already, I don't have to pay you again. Is that what you do? How often do you pay? Until it is paid off. We will serve the Lord. I said we will serve the Lord. 
You know, I have to tell you because there are some people, they say they are born again and they are liars. They say they know the Lord and they are liars. When it comes to giving to God, they are angry. Ask your neighbor, are you angry? When it comes to serving the Lord, when it comes to come for extra practice, when it comes to, when it comes to come for a uh, workers meeting, uh, but we came to church for Bible study on Monday, uh, but we went for evangelism on Tuesday, uh, but uh, we, what else did you do? We came for prayer meeting on Friday. Why are you telling us to come again on Saturday for workers meeting? How often do you go to work? I said, how often do you go to work? You come to church every day. I need a better amen. amen. Is somebody being blessed this morning? It's a day of resurrection, right? It's a day of joy, right? And we need to speak to ourselves so that things and can come alive in us in Jesus' name. God will not send an angel from heaven to do his work here on earth. We must know it is our responsibility to sacrifice for the work of the Lord. In Ezra chapter 3, verses 6 to 10, we see the people at the time of Ezra, they did the best they could to God's, to the building, uh, to, to build the house of the Lord. Ezra chapter 3, look at it from verse 6. From the first day of the seventh month began they to offer bond offering unto the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. They gave money also unto the masons and to the carpenters and meat and drink and oil unto them of Zidon and to them of Tyre to bring cedar tree from Lebanon to the sea of Joppa according to the, uh, according to the grant that they had of Cyrus king of Persia. Now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem. In the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Sheatiel, and uh, uh, Je uh, Joshua, the son of Josadek, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests, and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem and appoint the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. The work of the house of the Lord. The work of what? The house, the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons with who? And his brethren Kidmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah together to set forward the workmen in the house of God. The sons of uh, Henadad with their sons uh, and their brethren, the Levite. Uh, and when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpet. And the Levites uh, and the sons of Asaph uh, were symbol to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Praise the Lord. Can you see? The whole family were getting involved. Getting involved. Father, mother, children, uncle, everybody together. And this is the family of God. We shall build for, our, for, for the glory of our God in Jesus' name. No matter what we are building. Of course, we have a major project we are doing. But before that we've been building. It doesn't have to be a building. Maybe we are building the choir department, the music department, the ushering department, the children department. Whatever we are building for God's glory, let us all be our best, joining our hands together that God may be glorified in Jesus' name. When we talk about sacrifice, sacrificial giving is an excellent, unusual, uncommon, outstanding, painful, and extraordinary gift to the Lord. Something out of the norm. Out of the norm. Out of the norm. You know, many years back, you know, maybe over here, some have been complaining. Why are you asking for money? Why are you doing this or that? Many years back, 
1996 to be precise. We, for years, we've been renting and going from place to place. And at that time, we were renting from a particular church. And I told the church, I said, enough is enough. And I'm saying here, in your life, enough is enough. Amen. The Lord will set to you. Amen. The Lord will establish you. And I told them, enough is enough. We need our own building. We need our own property. It is enough of renting. It is enough of borrowing. It is enough of being pushed here and there. And I remember very well, around the April of that particular year, 1996, when the Olympic was coming, we were given five days to quit where we're staying. Because the church we're renting was to release the people for Olympic people because uh, just per night, I don't know how many thousands of dollars you get from one person per night. Because the whole world was coming to Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, there was nothing we could do. We ended up worshiping under the tree. All through the period, because we couldn't get a place. It was so short a notice they gave us. Under the tree. And I said, enough. we will not worship under the tree anymore. Enough is enough. And then I came to the church. And I said, church, we are moving forward. I can hear somebody. I can hear somebody. And I said, we are moving forward. And so we began the search and began the search and began the search. And uh, to the glory of God, we got a place. Nice building. To, you know, when you know me, uh, you know I'm all about combo. Amen? Everything must be combolized. I don't just go for one thing. What do I go for? I go for combo. And then this property is uh, two buildings in uh, but this pastor here. He, he, he used to be with me in Georgia. Amen. So he knows the property I'm talking about. We, we have the sanctuary up and down. And then we have another building separate, big enough that we use for fellowship. Paul, that's where we have all our uh, whatsoever. Even here in Washington, what do we have in Washington? I, maybe, maybe it never dawned on you that what we have here is combo. We have this building here. We have the other side over there. What do you call it? Combo. God is combolizing your life. God is combolizing your family. God is combolizing your ministry. And then let me quickly tell you before I come back to the story of Atlanta. If you are into one ministry in this church and you think uh, you are okay. No, you are not under my ministry yet. If you are under my ministry, you are going to go. You go combo. Amen. That means you do more than one thing. Amen. As they are pulling you here, they are pulling you there. That's why God gave you two hands. Amen. He gave you two eyes. Praise the Lord. He gave you two legs. Amen. And then when he gave you one head, understand that one head is combolized. There are so many things loaded in that head. Controlling the rest of the body. Somebody say combo. Combo blessing is coming your way. Amen. Come back to Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. And so I said, we are going to buy the property. And then we began to mobilize the people. Now understand, the time then was different from the time now. One dollar then is different from one dollar now. Am I communicating? And so when we began to talk about money, there was a family that time that felt we were talking about money too much. There will always be people that think you are talking about money too much. About the things of God. About the work of God. Not about buying suit for the pastor. Not about promoting the pastor. But the work of God. And the brothers stopped coming to the church. But we did not stop talking about God's glory. Amen. And within a few months. Within a few months. Maybe about two, three months. We closed on that property. We close on that property. And the brother, because he had been in the church for so long, people that have been in the church for so long, they have been used to negative stories for too long. Beware of them sometimes. Nothing was moving. So this will never happen. They are just wasting our time. And I said, I don't know that who it didn't happen. This is a combolized man with a combo blessing. Are you under a combo anointing? Yes. I can hear somebody. Yes. 
And the brother was surprised. We got it done. Amen. And then another brother came later on and said, Pastor, I need to do my restitution. He said, when you stood up, this is a different person now. He didn't leave the church. But I guess some of them were just looking and saying, okay, we shall see. Tell your neighbor, you shall see. I said, tell your neighbor, you shall see. Amen. And that's why I always say that whether you respond or not, God will do what he's going to do. Amen. Did I tell you that I may keep it to 6 o'clock today? I will try to release you by 5.59 p.m. <laughs> Amen. And he said, when you stood up to talk about this project, I didn't believe it. Because of this, because of this, because of this, but I am amazed. The way God did it. God will surprise you. God will surprise you. And you know, after we did that for God, I'm not afraid truth. The state of the church was bad. It was terrible. I met the church in a dilapidated situation. The church was about to be shut down when the church sent me down there from New York. And God, God just put to, it's not me. God just put the pieces of the church together. I was told the last time the Denver service the place, he told them that he was, next time he comes, he was shutting them down. But after that, God spoke to him, send this person down. God has something to your life to turn your situation around. Be patient with God. It shall be well with you. I said it shall be well with you. And we got it done. And we got it done. In case you don't know, this church where we are doesn't used to be here. Amen? There are still few people here. Amen? Where we used to be, some bread and the college March box. Ah, some of you still remember. They call it match box. You know what they call it? Ma matches. The box of matches. It was that small. The place could only take 110 people. I still remember. With small, small chairs we were using. The 110 is not just two people seeing. That includes packing everything on the stage, including the pastor's chair and the stage. Oh my goodness, you remember the stage. He used to be our cameraman. Praise God. Praise the Lord. They call it March Balls. And then I came and I said, this place is too straight for us. That's what they told Elisha. It's too straight for us. And I said, we need a better place for God's glory. And we began the more. We had no money. We were paying $1,040 a month for mortgage. It was difficult paying it. The church could not pay me a cent. And I'm telling you, for about seven, eight years that I was here, the church could not pay me a cent. But we're moving on. It was in the midst of that I said, we're going to buy a building. The first time I saw this building, we were out there. And two people were with me. One of them said, this is good. I said, yeah, it's good, but I'm not ready to commit suicide yet. That was exactly my life. I said, I wasn't ready to commit suicide. Will you push me into it? 1000 you couldn't pay. And this building was priced for $2.5 million that time. So I ran away. I was looking for all the things. But God said, I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will share with nobody. Michael, go back there. That building from where you said you're not ready to commit suicide, go back there. But Lord, how do we do it? We don't have money. We can't even pay $1,000. Go back there. To cut a long story short, where are we today? We are here. I said we are here. I said we are here. He will do it again. I said he will do it again. Did I say we do it? He has done it again. And I remember for the first time when we got out of that place, if you all remember those of you that were sitting around, we were in Laurel, and I stood one day, no invitation to anybody, no prior notice to anybody, and understand the time then was different from the time now. Most of our people were just CNA workers. Jobless people, 
Like we have many seniors here today. And say, well, we have a lot of seniors and uh, students in this church. Don't worry about the seniors and the students. All of us, the seniors, the students, the working class, the non-working class, will join our hands together and we will build for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I stood and for the first time in the history of the church, I said, we need this. And that very day, we raised $50,000. No prior notice. The first of such that was ever raised in any of our churches in the United States of America. We did it. God will do it again. The question is, from where is it coming? When there is willingness, when there is readiness, God will do anything and everything through willing and ready people. And everybody that gave has been blessed. I need, a, I need a clap offering to the Lord for that. Everyone that gave has been blessed. I'm yet to see one person among those that gave that his or her life remained the same. He's such a good God. He's such a great God. When God wants to promote somebody, he puts a test before you. When God is thinking about unharvests, he comes from the angle of sowing. He tells you, sow. And you understand it's not easy to sow. To sow, you have to till the ground. To sow, you have to get the seed. To sow, you have to, you, you, you have to put it down, cover it, and water it. But at the end of the day, what do you get? You get harvests. Harvest is coming your way. Amen. Harvest is coming to your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You know, I was sharing with some people yesterday. This is just a little digression. But it doesn't matter. Because I'm still going to talk about you sowing into the life of people. You sow to the Lord. You sow to the life of other people. I was telling some people uh, that uh, there is a brother here. He was just an LPN when I came to Washington. And uh, the very first person. Pay attention here. In deeper life, America, that single-handedly said, let me obey the Bible and honor the man of God. An LPN. He wrote a check, $500, and he said, Pastor, this is an offering to you. Do I tell you something? That person's life has not remained the same. The person has gone from being a, an LPN. Now the person is an employer. The person has gone from one company to companies right now. Praise the Lord. And I was sharing with the person, and the person is here in our midst. You'll be another one. I said you'll be another one. You'll be another one. And when we are giving to the Lord, uh, we were talking the other day, and then uh, we, we checked the record, and this our project we are doing, I saw the person has single-handedly given $35,000. And you know, you talk to some people, give $1,000, say, mm -hmm. they squeeze their nose. It's because you are not yet there. The Lord will take you there. I said, the Lord will take you there. He did it when it was hard and difficult, when it was not convenient. And God said, you did this out of inconvenience. I will convenience your life. And when we're giving to the church, he gave too. The little he could as at that time. They didn't shy away and say, ah, ah. Uh, uh, you know the ah uh, uh, people God will ah uh, ah uh, you amen you, you know the way God, God uh, asks people when he feeds you with blessing and then you say come and see you. come and see come and see all the Lord by then he has ah uh, ah uh, you tell somebody God will ah uh, ah uh, you amen amen so, sacrificial giving is a demand from a higher power to know your level of love, your level of worship, your level of commitment and, uh, and service. I told you before, when God was going to test Abraham, to promote Abraham, you know what God did? Abraham, your son, your only son, sacrifice him. Lord, are you that mean-spirited? Are you that wicked? Uh-uh. No question. 
Abraham said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, some pastors, they will tell you to go and empty your account for the pastor. Here, we don't tell you to do that. If you ever empty your account, you empty it for the Lord. Because the one you empty it for, will fill it up for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so, go back into the book of Genesis. God promoted Abraham. And Abraham was not the same person anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we read it from First Chronicle. When you want to avert a disaster, when you want to break a cause, when you want to lose a band, try sacrificial giving. You have been trying to get some things done. It's been hard and difficult and tough. You have prayed and fasted and it's like there is no way. Try making sacrifice unto the Lord. And it's not a sacrifice that says, oh, I'm making sacrifice. No, 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 no. You do it from your heart. You do it in between you and God. Something is only by fasting. You can fast till the kingdom come. You can pray till the kingdom come. Come back to the principles of blessing and you'll be blessed. In Jesus' name. Why do we, of course I told you some of them now, causes for sacrificial giving that prospers. I've told you some of them already, but let's quickly go. Genesis chapter 8, verses 18 to 21. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took every clean beast and of every clean farm and what's the next thing offered bond offerings on the altar and the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart I will not again cause the ground anymore your sacrifice will avert Judgment. Your sacrifice will break curses. Your sacrifice will make a way for you. Because of the sacrifice that Noah made, God made a promise. I will not, for this case, this case of sacrifice, cause the earth anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I against might anymore. Everything living as I have done. Let's look at a few reasons why sacrifices are necessary. Sacrificial giving shows you are not ungrateful towards God. That's what you are doing. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Sacrificial giving proves your true love for your God. First Chronicles chapter 21, 22 to 26. What is that already? Sacrificial giving shows your total reliance on God. You are not trusting in the arm of the flesh. You are trusting in the Lord. Number four. Sacrificial giving shows your value for God. How much you honor him, respect him, appreciate him. Your value for God. Number five. Sacrificial giving will take you to another realm of God's blessing. It will take you to another realm of God's blessing. Genesis chapter um, 22 verses 1 to 18. Sacrificial giving will change your entire destiny and generation. I need an amen there. Genesis chapter 14 verses 7 to 20. Sacrificial giving will prove your preferred place of your treasure. Preferred place of your treasure. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to quickly read that. Matthew chapter 6. Verses 19 to 21. Matthew 6. Verses 19 to 21. You see the word of the Lord. Speaking to you. And speaking to me. Verse 19 says. Lay not up your treasures. Lay not up for yourselves. Treasures upon earth. Where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, 
where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where, verse 21, everybody, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If your heart is on the Lord, you will invest unto the Lord. Point number three. Let's look at the cases or, cat or catalog of people that were prospered through sacrificial giving. Let's look at them. Number one is the maker himself. And because of this, he remains God. God gave his only, sacri his only begotten son sacrificially. John 3, 16. He gave his son sacrificially. Abel, I told you about Abel before. Abel gave the best of his livestock to show a deep love for God in Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 to 8. Abraham gave his only son sacrificially to please the heart of God. And when Abraham was to slaughter Isaac, God stayed his hand. He brought a replacement. Let me tell you. The Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. And after many days, what's going to happen? You will have it back. You will have it back. The more you are looking at your bank account, the more you are looking at your health, some they say, well, because of my head, I can't serve God. You just got it wrong. You just got it wrong. Let me share a testimony with you. I tell you, I'm, I'm not in the haste today. It's a day of resurrection, right? Amen? I was sick. Very, very sick. Very, very sick. And couldn't even get up. If I tried to stand up, maybe for a few seconds, few minutes, I'll lose my balance. If there is nothing to hold, I'll be on the floor. To even get up, to lay down was excruciating pain. To sit down was a problem. It was bad. At some point, I felt the time was up. Now, some years back, I was preaching in Georgia, and I told them, and I told them the truth. I said, I didn't even know I could ever get to the age 50. Because by then, I already crossed that bar. You will cross that bar. Yeah. And I know some of you already, you have crossed 80. I will cross that bar too. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. I, I, I like good things. How about you? Amen. Amen. I love to go to heaven. Trust me. Amen. But I won't commit suicide. Praise God. <laughs> if God calls me, fine. If he has not called me, I will live my life in health and strength. In Jesus' name. But then I felt, well, the time was up. And um, I was ready. I was ready. All I needed to do is just examine myself, examine my life. And I said, Lord, thank you. And uh, I couldn't tell my better half what was going on. They all knew I was sick, very sick. To get up, my son then we had to support me and everything. But they didn't know I was preparing the ground for final exit. And so I called them together. We we'll talk, we we'll laugh. I was in pain, but I need to get their attention. And then I was trying to disseminate information about their father, about everything. And I said, you know this? Tell me about what you know about your father. I do that. Uh, and then they told me, I said, okay, this you don't know. And then this one is here. That one is dead. This, this, that, 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 that. Uh, they don't know anything. And uh, this particular Sunday, Sunday came. And I was sick. And I couldn't walk. And uh, must I sit home? Today is the day of the Lord. And I said, no. And something within me say, if you are going to die at all, the best place to die is in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so, with their help, I got dressed, and uh, they thought it's just to come to church. And uh, initially, my wife said, where are you going? I said, I'm go where are you going to? <laughs> Amen. I'm, you are going to church, I'm going to church. <laughs> Praise God. And so, they help, and then we came here together. We came early, you know. Uh, like we came to like an hour ahead of time today, not because we were sick, we just, we just got to church early today, amen, and they came early enough so that nobody will see <laughs> their pastor being escorted into the sanctuary, and everyone will say, sorry, pastor, people will not tell you sorry, amen, amen. so we came enough, and then some people, very few people came early enough, and then uh, they saw, they thought, they, they thought pastor was 
just walking psychedel psychedelically that very day. They didn't know that their pastor is on his way to glory. <laughs> Amen. And then, as usual, I just sat at the back and uh, everything was going. I couldn't get up to anything. Even if I were to use the bathroom, I couldn't go that day. Amen. And I was just waiting for time for service to come and then get up here and then pack it up here. Amen. Uh, I didn't tell anybody, but that was that if there is anything, I will serve God to the last breath in me. Amen. And so I told whoever was uh, the usher, one of them, and I said, uh, when the choir is done singing, go there, lead them into prayer so that when they are praying, I psychedelically walk up here again. <laughs> Amen. And so I got here and then I was ministering. People don't know, they thought I was just going the old fashioned way. I was holding the pulpit like this. Because if I stand like this, uh, but to cut the long story short, instead of me exiting to glory, I exited into life. Amen. While I was here ministering, I got healed. Amen. Listen, if the cause of a little headache, a little leg pain, you say, I can't serve God, I can't serve God, you better serve God till you die. Listen to this. Whether you serve God or you don't serve God, you will die. So why don't you just serve him to the last breath in you? I read of a man, I don't remember the name again. This was far back in the, in the, in the 80s I read about him. He was preaching and preaching and preaching and then eventually he collapsed. He passed on. So they carried his dead body out and then at the, at the back of the stage, the minister told him eventually, he came back to life. As soon as he opened his eyes, he said, am I back here? Take me back to the pulpit. <laughs> Amen? No, when we talk about faith of our fathers, living still, it's not about the kind of faith we talk about today, that a, a faith of comfort, faith of uh, God, if you don't give me money, I won't serve you again. Don't serve him. Whether there is money or not, we'll serve the Lord. No, there is a song I heard of years back. It says, Ah, we praise the Lord. You know it. I will praise the Lord. No matter what tomorrow brings or what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. Sing with me. I will praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord. No matter what tomorrow bring, or what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. You will praise the Lord. With your life, you will praise the Lord. With everything, you will bless the Lord. In Jesus' name, God gave his best. Abel gave his best. Abraham gave his best. A Moabite king sacrificed his child to win a battle that he was losing. You find that in 2 Kings chapter 3, verses 26 to 27. Solomon gave to dedicate to the house of God. Go and read that. Go and, go and look at it. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 63 to, 20, uh, to 64. Look at Jephthah. Before Jephthah went to battle, he made a vow. Lord, if you will bring me back from this battle, the first thing that comes from my house, I will sacrifice unto thee. And Jephthah had only one child. And that child was a lady, daughter. And the first thing that came out from Jephthah's house was the daughter. And Jephthah had no option. Jephthah did not go to negotiate with God. Some of you are negotiators. Jephthah did not go back to negotiate with God. He gave the best and the only one child that he had. We read about David already that bought the land that said, I will not give unto God that which costs me nothing. If that thing does not cost you anything, it is not a sacrifice. 
It is a gift, but it's not. A, it's, you have not done any sacrifice. You have ten thousand, and then you took one thousand out of it. You've made no sacrifice. No, 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 no. You have not done anything to really charge God, challenge God, and make Him to move on your behalf. It will happen in Jesus' name. Look at the uh, the, the the widow of uh, Zarephath. The widow of Zarephath. Elijah said, uh, the woman said, what we have is just for me to eat and my son and then we die. You will not die. I say you will not die. I say you will not die. I say you will not die. You will live in Jesus name. Uh, you think this is all the resources we have to sustain life, to maintain. No, that's not what you have. As long as you have God, you have everything. Because God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He walks in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. He will be my guide. Hold me closely to his side. With love and strength for each new day. He will make a way. He will make. Turn to someone and say, God will make a way for you. Tell somebody else, so God will make a way for you. Turn to your back and say, God will make a way for you. Point to the person before you and say, God will make a way for you. I thought you all would point towards me over here and say, God will make. <laughs> Put your hands together for the Lord. He's a great God. He's a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's a faithful God. He's a marvelous God. He's a caring God. He will care for you. In the name of Jesus. Look at, the, uh, look at a lady called Mary. Of a, uh, uh, When I want to say that, sometimes I almost have my tongue twist. Alabaxa box. Amen. She brought not just an oil. Now, you need to understand there are all kinds of oil. There are different perfumes. She brought a very expensive one to anoint the feet of the master. You would have thought this woman was foolish. No, she was making a sacrifice. She was making an investment. At the end of the day, Jesus said, wherever this gospel shall be preached about, this woman shall be spoken about. You'll be remembered for life. You'll be remembered for life. Your gift, your sacrifice will be remembered for life. Your devotion will be remembered for life. Your commitment will be remembered for life. In Jesus' name. Look at, you know, when I see people that says they are believers, they are church people, they are Christians, they are born again, they are deeper life, and they, all they can do is just to talk. They talk. I walk away from them. I'm not looking for talkers. I'm looking for actors. I said I'm looking for actors. I said I'm looking for actors. They were in the church one day. They call it synagogue then. And it was time for offering. But you know, sometimes when we give offering here and we say people should, should, should come out, you know there are some old timers in deeper life that get angry. That is not the now. Who told you the now? Amen. You don't understand where some of us are coming from when you have a congregation of 50,000, 100,000. For them to be coming out, it will take a whole week before they finish the offering. So we have to come up with something else. But we are not that many. Amen? And over there in the Bible, they were coming out. Somebody say coming out. Somebody say coming out. You are coming out of poverty. You are coming out of infirmity. You are coming out of trouble. You are coming out of problem. They just say, eh, that is not our culture. Which one is your culture? And even the way they say, culture.
the kind of wrong culture that is not building you up. The kind of culture you are doing that is making you to be a thief. Don't you know when they even pass the bag around, some people <laughs> pass over. And they are doing Passover offering. But when we say come out, and everyone is coming out, you have no choice, you will come out. I said somebody is coming out. I said somebody is coming out. And then in the Bible, they were coming out. And then they were dropping their offering. Offering out of the abundance that they had. And this old lady came out in Mark chapter 12. Look at it from verses 41 to 44. Amen. And then this lady had how much? Only two minds. And then the kind of plates they use that time. Maybe we should go and get. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go and get that kind of plate. So that those of you that are, when we say tight and offering, you are dropping coin, 50 cents. So that when it drops, what do we hear? Barang. <laughs> Somebody say amen. And as soon as the woman drop her two, might the thing sounded brown, and everyone looked at what that and said, "Ah, it is old mama," and that was all that she had. And Jesus said, "Heaven caught that. That is sacrifice. All that she had, she dropped. Some would have heard it back and said, "Well, at least this will buy me a little cookie or a little bread." No, she said, "God first." And then, just like the widow of Zarephath I mentioned, she, 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 she gave up her right and then took care of the man of God and God, she did not die. You will not die. Let's go the Bible way. Not just talking and talking. I have been in the Bible since 1922. Congratulations. We need you to prove to us your love for God. Your commitment to God. Your devotion to God. Your sacrifice for God. And we will see the blessing of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. But if you must give, number four, condition. Condition for prosperity through sacrificial giving. If you must give, please be sure you are first of all born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Pay attention here. When we talk about the kingdom of God, it's not only when you get to heaven. Because Jesus said, the kingdom of God has come to you. It's in your soul already. That simply means, uh, when you are born again, understand, the Bible says, you forsook your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your aunt. He said, you will gain everything back in this world. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. The, because there is no lack in the kingdom of God. There is no austerity in the kingdom of God. If you are in the kingdom of God, he takes care of you. I need an, an amen. amen. You know what I discovered in this church? People that are daily serving the Lord, giving their time, their talent and treasure, they are getting better. They are getting stronger. They are, I have seen people that say, well, because of this, I don't have time for church. I don't have time for service. I don't have time for this. And I see that they are making no progress. No progress. A young man was giving testimony on her after his uh, graduation the other time. And his commitment to God and everything, and uh, people normally would think, well, if you are that serious with God, time for God, sacrifices for God, you will fail in life. I have discovered the opposite to be the truth. The more you give to God, the more God gives unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Look at it. Good, not just a measure, but what? A good measure. The Bible says, uh, 
press down. You know, it's wanting to pour that thing into, into, into the basket. The Bible says, when it is poured, what, what do you do next? It is pressed down. Press down blessing is coming your way. The Bible says, when you press it down, there is possibility of some vacuums in some places. The old ladies here, they will tell you what I'm talking about. What do you do in the village in those days? You put your hand like this, you shake it like this. You come this way, what do you do again? You shake it like this. And then, as you are shaking it, what is happening to what you put inside? It's going down more, 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 more. Your blessing is multiplying. And then, when it goes down more, what do you do? You add more to it. And then, when you add more, you shake it again. You shake it again. Amen. You have been blessed, you will bless again. I say be blessed again. I say be blessed again. In the name of Jesus. It's time for you to be blessed. But understand, sacrificial giving. Sacrificial giving. You need good health. Sacrificial giving. And please understand, I'm not just talking about money. Of course, you give money. I'll still talk about money later on. But I'm talking about sacrificial. You give your life. You give your life. Sacrificially. That then means opposition you come. Your life is on the altar. Persecution will come. Your life is on the altar. Do you notice that in this nation, people are not really serving God anymore? People are religious but not righteous. There is no persecution. Now, you go to jail. Some of the people working in jail, they told me that when you go to jail, people that go to jail get easily, uh, get converted into Islam. You know the reason why? All the ones that go to church there, they have no personal encounter with God. So while in jail, they don't talk about God. But the people of the other religion, they are busy there converting people. It will change. Amen. I said it will change. In the name of Jesus. We can't preach the gospel anymore. Sacrificial giving. You create time. You go out and evangelize. Last Sunday, we talked about evangelism. How many showed up on Saturday? After the service, I learned just about 20 people were available. And then you say, I'm a Christian. What kind of a Christian are you? That is not ready to sacrifice your time. Eh, you are hungry. You want to go home. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Have you forgotten Esau? That sold the bad tribe because of muzzle of bread? Don't you understand? When you sow into the life of people, God will sow into your life. Who knows whether the life that you are saving now will be the one that will save you later on? Do I tell you this? The person I minister to many years back and then gave his life to Christ Jesus, he's the one God, years later, God used for me to get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then you say, I have no time. You will have time sacrificial giving. You give your life as salvation. You give your life in service to God. Give it. Your busyness and your business. The two of them. Your business and your what? And your busyness will not take you to eternity. Will not stand for you in eternity. But what you do for God is what will last Give unto God. And it shall be given unto you. In Jesus name. Amen. I told you about came before. But you find out in Genesis chapter 4. Verses 3 to 8. What Cain did. That got him rejected. But let's look at Proverbs chapter 11. We read it before. But we're going to read it again. There is that scattered and yet increased. And there is that we told it. Uh, more than is made, but it tended to poverty. The liberal soul shall meet fat. I need an amen. 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 So there should be genuine conversion. Number two, there should be consecrated service. Consecrated service. Number three, there should be faith in prosperity. 
believe in prosperity. Because if you don't believe in something, you don't work towards it. Am I right? You don't be, it's what you believe in that you work towards. Many of you are foreigners. Thank God for those of you that are Americans here. You don't understand what you're talking about. Many of these foreigners, you know why they are here? Because <laughs> they had story that America is good. And they desire to be here. And they paid heavy price to come. How many of you came here for free? They paid heavy price to come here. Because you believe in this land, you came here. Even though by the time you came, you realize that <laughs> America. And some of them are looking for a way to go back. But unfortunately, they gave up everything before they left. So there is nothing to go back and meet. Stay here. Let's preach together. Amen. Amen. Believe in it. Believe in it. Believe in it. Believe you can. Be prospered. If you don't believe the prosperity is for you, you will not be prospered. Let me tell you this. Years back, I believe no matter the situation in this land, we can buy property without going to the bank. You see it with your spiritual eyes. You confess it with your spiritual tongue. You seize it by faith and your action. And I told people this is doable, but I was like a tale teller. What do you call it? Like I was telling fable. They don't believe it. But I can tell you right now that by the grace of God, in this land, we have bought three church properties without going to the bank. Without going to tear the bank, we need a dime from you. And those that did not believe it that time are bamboozed. God will bamboozed your enemy. And I was telling some people yesterday in Philadelphia. I know some of you saw me yesterday and then you didn't, you didn't see me again. But before you know it, even my wife didn't know when I disappeared. Amen. Because again, I must be about my father's business. In case you don't know, yesterday alone I was in five different churches. And some of them would say, Pastor, you should have gotten a driver. Okay, the Holy Ghost is driving me. <laughs> Who is driving you? Amen. Of course, if you volunteer to drive me, I will give you the key. And you'll be blessed. But don't expect money. <laughs> Amen. Where are we? Believe it. You know, Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 that I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. You've got to believe it. It is that faith, listen, it is that faith in the invisible because the prosperity is not something you have now. But there is something you have right now, it is the seed. The seed is what you have right now. And then, that's what you're going to sow. When you sow that seed, then the prosperity that is not visible will come. If I have a seed in my hand, mention any kind of seed, any fruit, mention anything. Corn. I have a seed of corn in my hand. If I tell you this one seed of corn in my hand is a forest of corn, will you believe it? Because I'm talking faith into you now, you believe. But ordinarily, you have said no. Because if I plant that one seed and then it germinates, I'm not going to get one seed back. Amen? And out of so many that comes, I plant them again. What do I get? Multiple be a sower. I said, be a sower. It is when you sow that you begin to harvest. And it will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Avoid erroneous teacher and teachings. And some of them may be in our midst. They tell you you have given too much. They tell you you are not giving the right way. 
They tell you, who told you to give? Be careful. Give. If it means to give your whole life, give. 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 People give up their career for this cause. People give up their life for this cause. People left America, go to Africa and die. Some of them didn't even make it there. For this cause. Jesus left heaven for this cause. The apostles, they died for this purpose, for this cause. Peter was crucified upside down, head down, for this cause. Some were pierced with hot iron for this cause. And somebody is telling you, you have given too much. It's the doctrine of the devil. It's a way to keep you perpetually bound. I release you today. I said I release you today. In the name of Jesus. It's a lie and a teaching and a doctrine of the devil. And they want you to wait until you hear an angel tell you this is how you must give. Anyhow you give, or what do you do? Give. 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 Galatians 1 says, though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be what? Let him be accursed. People like that should be set aside. You don't want to have anything to do with them. Because they are not walking by the spirit of God. They are under the influence of another spirit. Beware of them. They are trying to draw attention to themselves. They are egoistic. First teaching, first doctrine. Associate yourself with people that give. No, you know, sometimes what we do here, people don't understand. There are people that are weak in faith, want to strengthen their faith. You know, when it comes to the investment in life, some don't know about investment, and then you want to teach them about how to invest. You know, some years back, uh, a friend had been talking to me about investment, investment. You know what the friend finally did one day? Just came with $2,000 and said, Pastor, this is a gift for you. Not for another thing, but for you to invest. Since it's a committed money, what did I do with it? I invested it. Some people, they, they don't have better understanding. The environment they are being into is the environment of holding back and holding that back and holding back, spiritualizing everything. And we are saying there is a better way to prosperity. Why will you be holy and die poor? Why will you be righteous and die like I was in the name of the one that was in Abraham's bosom? Lazarus. And all you see in your life is Lazarus dying holy. I can tell you about Abraham that died holy. He was rich. I can tell you about David that died righteous. And God said, he was a man after my own heart. Why are you limiting yourself to people that are not making it in life? Again, when I got to Atlanta in 1996, I think about two years later, a brother was talking with me. He said, Pastor, he said it was after you got to this church that I began to dress well. I didn't understand. I said, what do you mean? He said, before you came, the impression they gave us is, if you are born again, you are a Christian, this is how you must dress. But then I came and then I come with suit. I come in time. And I come well dressed. Praise God. Am I dressing well today? Amen. And trust me, many of you are dressing well too. Amen. I told my wife when we left home this morning, I said, ah, what happened? You dress for church well today. Praise God. Tell somebody dress well. After the service, uh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. After the service, just go take another look at her. She dressed well. He said they all they have been telling them is to dress like a poor person, a wretched person, a hopeless person. I cancel that in Jesus' name. 
Let me help to change your mentality. I don't care whether the tape contain my message or not. As long as you are blessed. Pay attention here. We have the, the first couple's retreat. I don't know. The, some pastors are here. They will still remember. We have it in a hotel in Baltimore area. If you still remember the first couple's retreat. And then we invited some pastors from other churches to come. Uh, just to be part of it. We were doing the administration and everything ourselves. And one of them. Towards the end of it, stood up and said, I have something to say. And this is somebody, though not a member of Deeper Life, but has known Deeper Life, has been attending Deeper Life Bible study from the early 70s. A very good friend of Deeper Life and well known in this church. He said, Pastor, this meeting opened my eyes. I thought he was blessed by all the sharing. So he kept on talking. He said, listening to all these pastors, this one is an engineer. This one is a doctor. And the one said he was uh, a drug dealer. One said he was a drug dealer. You know who are the drug dealers? Pharmacists. Pharmacist. Another one said, I am the law enforcement engineer that will arrest you, drug dealer. <laughs> Amen. He is into the law enforcement uh, something. And then this one will come and said, I am a medical doctor. He said, the way I have always seen the polite people is as if they are never educated. The way you present yourself is the way they will look at you. Tell somebody, you are better than that. <laughs> Tell somebody, dress well. Even if you have not eaten for the past one week, dress well. And when you dress well, put a smile on your face. Amen. Nobody is going to know you have not eaten. Amen. And that is the way they have taken many of us in deeper life. Over the years, as if we are nobody, we are somebody. And they don't respect us. They don't value us. Because when you even tie your hair scarf, you tie it as the one that is just returning from the farm. I'm ready to give it to you this morning. Are you ready to receive from me? And then even though we said dress well and we wear covered and then your skirt. And the kind of skirt they will wear. No shape. No nothing. And then the thing will go this way. And then we go this way. God will forgive you. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. No, there is a woman. She's here. Uh, I've not seen her this morning, though. I won't mention her name. A member of the church. And then at some point, for whatever reason, she left deeper life, went somewhere. And then I saw her on the street one day. And I couldn't recognize her again. She looked like a young lady. Well dressed. You understand? Like somebody looking for a new husband. Amen? And I said, my goodness, so this woman could dress this way. Why did she never dress this way while she was with her? But then God touched her again and then she returned to deeper life. And you know what? She returned back to her old dressing. God will change you in Jesus' name. You are, not, you are not representing us well. We are better than that. We are beautiful people. All our sisters say, are you beautiful? Even when you are putting on a cap, put on your cap psychedelically. Amen? I'm not saying you should turn your cap upside down or backward. The one you see put on in the backward, something is wrong with that. Eh? They are going backward. Look at their end. Amen. But what I mean is, put it well. Not, not in such a way that uh, the thing is supposed to be facing here and then it's uh, 
is uh, doing contour. Amen. When you tie your... Don't you know there are people that specialize in tying hair scarf? I don't have any problem with your culture. Please understand. I'm not saying everything should be English. The English people, the Americans, they're even, they even looking for African culture. Do you understand? I have some of them when I go in my traditional royal apparel. Some of you they are looking at me. The Bible calls me royal. Not just that I am royal, I am also a priest. Royal what? Priesthood. Amen. When I go in my royal apparel, you, you come and look at all these Americans, uh, the white and the black, the, they would deliberately come and say, oh, this looks good. I was oh, thank you. And then I adjust my cap again. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. It is well with you. It is well with you. And it will continue to be well with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But then addict yourself to sacrificial giving. If you're going to be blessed. Addict yourself. When you do that, my time is far gone. Long ago. There is going to be a confirmment on you. Confirmment of blessing. Confirmment of peace. Confirmment of joy. Confirmment of progress. Confirmment of power. Everything you lay your hands upon to do will prosper. God is not a debtor. He never owes anybody. Go check your Bible. Everyone that sowed into God. God multiplies them. Stand upon your feet. It's time for you to be multiplied. It's time. It's time. Sacrificial giving is a master key to prosperity. Sacrificial giving is a secret of prosperity. Sacrificial giving is a way to touch the heart of God. Those of you parents that are not in the music ministry, but you make the sacrifice of bringing your children now and then, your labors are not in vain. They are not in vain. Those of you that you are workers, and then you are in the choir, you are in the ocean department or whatever, and you give time again, even when you are corrected, even when you are even disciplined, you, you, you still don't give up. Your labors will not be in vain. It will not be in vain. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, it is my turn to be blessed. It is my turn to be blessed. It is my turn to be blessed, and I shall be blessed. 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 But then understand, you need to make sacrifice. You need to make sacrifice. Don't get angry. Make sacrifice. Let no man stand on your way of blessing. You need to make sacrifice. Even when it means so you to be rejected, to be deprived of the necessities of life, if that sacrifice you have to make, you need to make sacrifice. If you are not yet born again, the first sacrifice you need is giving your life to Jesus. You lay it on the altar of God and never to withdraw it again. You need to make sacrifice. If you have not been faithful in coming to the presence of the Lord because of whatsoever your reason may be, you need to make sacrifice. If you have not been faithful in tithing, that is not even a sacrifice, that is a command. 
It is anything over and above your tithe that is now a sacrifice, your offering. You need to repent of your unfaithfulness first and then go the extra mile, make sacrifice. You are gifted in one way or the other, but you never have time for God. You need to make sacrifice. I need to pray tonight, today, and say, Lord, every reason for stagnation in my life, for cause in my life, for poverty in my life, I rebuke them today. Anything holding me back and hindering me from serving you, be it physical or spiritual, Lord, take care of that situation now. You know, to be sanctified, you need to make sacrifice. To be filled with the Holy Ghost, you need to make some sacrifices. Sacrifice in prayer. Sacrifice in consecration. Sacrifice in devotion. You need to make sacrifice. Sacrifice of surrendering yourself and your life unto God. When God accosted Saul on the way to Damascus, he said, Lord, what will you have me do? Lord, what will you have me do? Lord, what will you have me do? You can ask that same question. When he asks, God answered him. He will answer you. Tell the Lord, I am tired of the situation. Young people, you should be praying. Teenagers, pray. Youth, pray. Daniel was a youth like you. He wasn't busy talking when prayers are going on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were teenagers. They gave their life. They made their own sacrifices. David began as a teenager confronting the bear and the lion. Confronting Goliath. He didn't just become a king overnight. If you want to be a king, you need to make your sacrifice. Jesus, now we pray. All eyes closed. All eyes closed. Understand again that today is the day of resurrection. And we're talking about the ultimate sacrifice that was made for humanity. For the salvation of our soul. And for our redemption. Jesus died for us. And that same Jesus wants you to die to your sin. He wants you to be alive in Christ Jesus. Alive in God. But you know yourself. You know your life. And you know that your life has been short of holiness and purity and uprightness. You know your life has been up and down. But you are saying today, I need that resurrection power of God. That will plunge me into a new life in God. Life of righteousness and holiness. Life of stability in God. And you are saying, here am I. Lord Jesus, here am I. All eyes closed. If you raise up your hand, I want to pray with you. 
Thank you. God bless you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Are there other people? Yes. You want to be launched into that new life of God. A life of sacrifice in righteousness. A life, the kind of life that was termed in time of persecution and opposition. There are a number of people that are indicating already understand position or title will not stand for you. In Jesus' name. Those of you with your hands up, please lay those hands upon your chest. Lay those hands upon your chest. Whatever you want him to do, ask right now. The blind Bartimaeus, Jesus asked, what do you want me to do for you? You want the new conversion. You need transformation of your life. You need holiness. The grace to stand and never to fall again. Consistent Christian living. Sin pushed and washed away. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I bring before you your children whose hands are right now upon their chest. The chest because every thought comes from the heart. I hand them over to you. Lord, as they have repented of their wrongdoings, confessing them to you and confessing that you can do it in their lives to make them whole. I pray right now, the nature of sin, the life of sin, the culture of sin, hear the word of the Lord, pack your load, get out of them in Jesus' name. Father, I pray the grace to stand in the truth, to stand in your word, to stand and walk in your will. Grant unto them in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, I pray for them that the resurrection power of Jesus Christ will come to walk in their lives today in Jesus' name. I pray, O oh Lord, that their names be written in the book of life. Satan, hear me. Pack your load. Pack your load. Pack your load. Get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit of God, come in right now. Take charge right now. Possess their soul right now. Grant them all the divine enablement to live their lives to your glory in Jesus' name. Give them assurance of salvation. Thank you, Father, for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are still praying. We are still praying. Thank God for those people that uh, just turn over their life to Christ. We are still praying. We are going to tell the Lord right now. Anything and everything that has been limiting me in life, I declare the resurrection power that brought life back to Christ Jesus and roll the stone away. Let it roll away. Every stagnation in my life, every hindrance in my life, every obstacle in my life, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray right now. As you pray, you also pray that life that came to Christ will come back unto you. Speak light to yourself. Speak prosperity to your life. 
You know yourself. You know what you are going through. You know what you want from the Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Father, we come before you now. Thanking you for the life you have given us. And the grace you have given us. And the world you have given us. And the name, even the name of Jesus that you have given unto us. We declare. Every pain, hindering, limiting, our progress, our success, our prosperity, we banish them now in Jesus' name. The spirit of stinginess, the spirit of selfishness, the spirit of self-centeredness, the spirit of blindness that does not make us to see beyond the present. Lord, we refuse and reject them now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, oh God, we declare our hands are blessed. Our hearts are blessed. Our lives are blessed. Our families are blessed. And we shall show to the work of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For every brother, every sister here, on this day of resurrection, I declare now, resurrection power of God coming to their lives. Everything about them that is dead, come back alive. Come back alive. Come back alive. Come back alive. In the name of Jesus, I speak to their head right now. Sickness vanish away. Life restore right now. In the name of Jesus, stagnation I command you. Get out of their way. Let there be progress. Let there be promotion. Let there be prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Wastages get out of their life. Let there be increase. In the name of Jesus. Every desires of the heart of your people. Grant unto them. Thank you father. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen.